Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Rock. Thanks so much for joining us as we get you set for today's game. Between the Devils and the Canucks, I'm Erica Walker alongside Bryce Salvador. And, of course, we are so happy to hear, have general manager of this club here, Ray Shiro. Ray, thanks for being here. No problem. Great to see you guys. All right, so, Ray, I, I just want to get right into it and start with the news of this last 24 hours, and that is signing Nico Heischer to a seven-year extension. Just how big is that to get that done, and also just so early in the process? Yeah, I think it, uh, it's really great for us, and, uh, you know, Josh Harris and David Blitzer, our managing partners, they've been fantastic about their plan and what we want to do, and they know Nico as well as we do as a player in person, so having some clarity uh, about the cap and uh, certainly is good also more probably to us I think Eric is that Nico he sure could have kind of waited like some players do and maybe the cap will go up uh, maybe wants a shorter term deal which wouldn't it be as beneficial for us I believe but he uh, really believes in the team he believes in that the market here loves living here and certainly our fans have been fantastic with him so uh, we're happy to get that done and uh, it's one thing you know to have a, a good young player 20 years old really for eight years this year and seven more so it's a good uh, good day for us well Ray you hit it right on the head what I like the most about this deal is the fact that you have a 20 year old said you know what I'm not going to try to time a potential new TV deal or the CBA yeah. I'm committed with the Devils and so sometimes those contracts that don't have the distraction are the best ones would you say right and I think uh, with Nico knowing him as a person it's not that surprising um, and I when I had lunch with him and his agent before training camp he made that clear that he was happy and I, I did ask him because you know having to get to know him very well and his family and parents i asked him you know what does what does mom and dad think and they just said nico you're happy with that if you're happy we're happy and i'm i think it was great and i really think you know from from his standpoint um just being comfortable and yeah. knowing that what the team's all about and it's just, it's almost like uh, yesterday two years ago we signed him with entry level deal but uh it, it works well for him and for us and i really think like to me, it wasn't. I didn't want to. I didn't have to be dead right in this deal, and I really think I want it to be a win-win for him. And it's a, it's the biggest seven-year deal for coming out of your level for a player. But I know how this works. It's going to be overtaken, and he knows it too. Someone else will sign someone bigger. But all we're worried about is the Devils, and I want him to feel good about it. And uh, and certainly, the sooner we could do that, the better. And uh, I was really happy to hear that. Right off the bat, he wanted to commit here if we, if we wanted to, and that certainly was the case. And I'm sure you like hearing as well just that he is so appreciative of the confidence that you give him as a player. And now we have to ask you the question that, of course, so many fans want to well, we'll know now. We'll talk about Taylor Hall. Yeah, we're so. going to talk about Taylor Hall. Thank right. you, Ray. Yeah, you can do my job for me. I know they're separate players, but is there some you know, connection in a way of, you know, we know Taylor and Nico enjoy playing with each other, but just to get that done with Nico, as you have, continue these contract negotiations with Taylor. Yeah, I think with Taylor, it's uh, I, they're both separate. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, they're separate because I could get ahead of this one. You know, as of July 1, he could start talking to Nico and did that, but it was really in person before training camp. And, uh, and so, as I said, having that clarity and certainty to me does help in terms of now at some point with Taylor Hall. And I did give Taylor Hall a heads up yesterday uh, be, before I make him actually sign his contract. And I think that's a relationship with Taylor. And the, his response was he just a big smile. He goes, really? I'm like, yeah, so that's fantastic. They had a great relationship. And as you guys may know that as a former first overall pick, knowing what it's like, Taylor really took Nico under his wing, no different than they're both doing with Jack Hughes. So uh, Taylor was very happy about that. And not just from a player standpoint, but as a person, uh, he really, uh, they, they're really good friends and he's done a lot for Nico both on and off the ice and now vice versa. Yeah, Ray, and I think it's just really important that you get a contract with a kid like Heischer just because it's a corner piece for the next seven years here, or eight years, yeah. including this one. And you can really say this is really the first deal since Travis Ajak as a forward to really lock in for the fans, for the organization, get behind and say, you know what, we're potentially looking at the future captain here and somebody yeah. that's bought in. Yeah, you, yeah, you guys are you're around him every day. The, our fan base knows Nico Hisho as a player, certainly as a person. And it's funny that, you know, he's ours. We drafted him, and you're right about the longest deal. It's a big investment from Josh and David, but that's what, you know, that's what how you build a team. And certainly he's going to grow into his contract, and at some point he's going to be underpaid, but he knows that as well. But we know what we have here with Nico, and he's just 20 years old. And I think, you know, in terms of all you need to know about Nico before his first game against Colorado a couple years ago, the day before the media asked him, what are your expectations tomorrow? Your first game, uh, basically asking him maybe a goal. And he was didn't really understand the question. They're like, I expect to win. That was it. And uh, two nights uh, after the Ranger game, where Jack Hughes got his first point, 
Uh, I saw him after the game. I said, uh, Jack, you got what, you got your first what tonight? We got I got my first win. That's, it says a lot, and that's the kind of people you want and uh, you know, about building a team. And, and he's a, a tremendous young player, two-way center ice, but they're hard to find, and we're going to keep him. Love that. It says a lot about this culture, and uh, we will remind fans here, Nico Heischer is not playing tonight, but he will be joining us in the first intermission, so stick around for that. Now, Ray, we want to talk about just the state of this team overall. Earlier this week, you, you basically put a challenge out there to the group of guys saying that you wanted them to give you a vote of confidence that you picked the right team and you knew they could be playing better out there. Do you feel they met that challenge against the Rangers? Yeah, they did. And it's, it's you know, I, you know, we had a really good training camp, honestly. And it wasn't like there were signals and there were signs of training camp that we weren't dialed in, we weren't focused. I thought it was a very good training camp, very demanding, very hard. I think the trip to Naval Academy was fantastic for them. And um, But again, it's you get off to that start and it's not what anybody expected. The expectations, and I know one thing, Sal, you've been through this, I'm sure, yes. as an athlete. It's when you when there's no expectations or you're playing out the string at the end sometime, it's, it's easier. There's no pressure. But also the expectations sometimes changes people and, you know, they try too much or they react differently if things don't go right away. So I really think my thing, it's, again, it's accountability to me. I'm accountable to, to Josh and David and our fan base, but the coach, we get that part, the coaching staff, but the players as well. And, and I, I really think John's had their back and a lot of these players had his back and and that was a, a big game obviously for us but it's how we play when you're desperate I mean we had a lot of block shots a lot of desperation plays and you need a total team effort in this league to win and it's hard when you have half a team going let alone less than that and out of the six games we had played they weren't all six bad ones three of them were three of them were you know we played but that's not going to get it done at the end result if you go through a stretch like this in January or February you're going to get through it but the beginning it really magnifies everything so but it's a lot of soul searching for a lot of people including myself and they responded well which I thought they could and we'll see where it takes us but we have a tough team here in Vancouver playing very well and but it was a big start of the process we have Andy Green back and today so we'll you know hopefully that's going to help and uh, but we have a lot of hockey to play but you know we have standards that they met them the other night but we got to continue yeah, and I think that what was really important, Ray, is that was really, I would say, probably the first gut check that this team has had since you've been here with no real expectations until this summer, all the additions you did. And so it's nice you grow from those situations. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's nice to see that you did get that effort mm -hmm. and they understand now, hey, it's not going to be easy when you have these expectations. Now, how do we win under that pressure? So. It was a great uh, game for them, and hopefully, like you said, really? they now built on that. Yeah, I, actually, it was at when the Rangers made it 3-2. to two. <laughs> I think it was, I honestly, I think the way it played out, if we had actually won 4 one 5 one 6 one I know one thing, after the second period, we're up 3-1, to one, I'm like, good, that's good news, because we didn't get the dreaded 4-1 lead after 2. That's good. But I really think, you know, 3-2, you know, Zabonajan almost scored shorthanded. But it was hard. It, it was hard. We had to gr grind that out, and the empty netter was, that's, that's hockey. That's winning hockey. And you're under pressure, and um, that was good. And uh, so we have a, a lot more of that um, to kind of get through this. But there's a long way to go, but that was a good first step. Definitely was. Now, and in one of your answers just there, you, you talked about how the players had John Hines back, and he had their back as well. This week, you made another move, and, and that was to John Hines as well, deciding to put Tom Fitzgerald behind the bench. Can you just give us a little insight into what those conversations were like to make that move? Yeah, actually, it was uh, John Hines that came to me with it, and um, Fitzy uh, has played over a thousand games in the league. He actually, when I was in Pittsburgh with him, uh, he was behind the bench as assistant coach in 2009 when the Penguins won the Santa Cup uh, against Detroit uh, with Dan Bilesma and Mike Yo. So he he knows this, but his you know his passion. He could have been a, a coach uh, after that, obviously assistant, whatever. But his uh, the passion was management, and he's done a great job. But the greatest thing about Fitzy, he's been a leader, he's been a captain, and when John came to him or came to me. And we both went to Fitzy. It was whatever is best for the team, I'll, for sure. If I can help, I'll help. And I'll challenge guys who might not be that comfortable, but he's known John a long time. He uh, has known Rick Kowalski and worked with him closely when Rick was the head coach of uh, the far, farm team in Albany and Binghamton. Uh, he's known Mike Rear a long time and certainly in Azardine. So I thought that was really good on John's part. And, you know, it's... There's nothing wrong with saying that another set of eyes will be good. And, and Tom, Fitzy is more of an extension of the coaching staff anyway throughout the year, same in Pittsburgh, where the bounce ideas off him and things like that. So I think it's a, a good thing. And, you know, it's a little different for the players as well. And 
you know, a little extension myself down there, and I was going to put the blades on myself, but Lou had some extra skates around, but they didn't fit, and I'm not going to do that. So, But it's all about what's best for the team, and that's a team effort the other night, and that's what you ask for anybody that's working here and the, what's best for the team. So we'll see how it goes. There's no set timetable on it, but we'll see. I think um, – It'll be good for everybody, and uh, we'll see where it goes with Fitzy. But he's a passionate team guy and really experienced, so hopefully it will help. And we can see some positives right away with his addition on Thursday night. Ray Shearer, thank you so much thanks, for Erica. joining us. Enjoy thanks, the Ray. game. So, thanks very much, guys.